and we're on the light bulb page. Is that what you expected? We'll talk about that. The grand finale, that of the light bulb. Uh, this, this light bulb is so really cool. I think you're going to like this. Um, we're going to go back to voltage versus current for the light bulb. Remember for the diode we did current versus voltage to emphasize the voltage threshold need that's required to have current flow. But with the light bulb, and this is, uh, I don't know if it's tungsten, it's some sort of filament inside there that emits photons whenever there's current going through the light bulb. We're going to see that the light bulb, in a certain sense, does not appear to obey Ohm's law. Remember that Ohm's law requires there to be a function, that for every given current, there's one and only one voltage value. Um, so we can look at a certain situation with a light bulb and, and conjecture that oh, it doesn't appear to be Ohm's law. But we can narrow our field and find that, okay, it is obeying Ohm's law. It does have a resistance. What do you think is going to happen to the resistance of the light bulb? Remember that we have an AC waveform, an alternating current. We're switching the direction. And I don't know if you've looked, but on the software, the, the frequency is 0.25 hertz. We start up here at time zero. And in the first second, we just go down to zero voltage. We're at a peak positive voltage. We go down to zero voltage. And then in the next second, we go to the negative peak. So that's two seconds. And then the next second, we go up to the zero. So that's three seconds. And then in the next second, we go up to the peak. We finished one cycle, and it's taken us four seconds. So this is a rather slow frequency. And when you look at the light bulb, you'll just see it kind of pulsing back off and then pulsing. We don't see in the light bulb like we did in the LED. We don't see two different colors, okay? So sometimes that pulsing is from a positive and other times that pulsing is from a negative current flow. Different directions for the current flow. What's that going to look like on this plot, V versus I? Is that going to be a straight line? Straight lines occur when our resistance is constant. What do you think happens to a light bulb as it's slowly receiving more current? The current is ramping up. What do you think happens to the resistance? Do you think that the more current that's through the light bulb, maybe there's more resistance? So we might see that the resistance of the light bulb is actually changing in time. Let's take a look at what the, the light bulb does. When you plot voltage versus current at a low frequency, just a slow pulsing of the light bulb on and off, on and off, where do you think it's brightest on this plot? Just looking at this upper section right here, quadrant one, where do you think it's brightest? You think it's right here or right here or right here? Well, if this is voltage and this is current, wherever we have the most voltage, we'll have the most current because those are directly proportional. We should have the brightest when we have the most voltage. Kind of makes sense. And right here, of course, we have no voltage and no current. So what is the status of the light coming out of the bulb? There is no light coming out of the bulb. And then here we have the, the negative voltage and therefore the negative current. Huh. I guess it's probably changing the most right here. But which one happens first? Is it this side or this side? Is it the side that's more curved that happens first? And by first, I mean the light bulb is off. It's getting brighter. Okay, So it goes from off to brightest. Which line is it tracing to go from off to brightest? This line or this line on top? It turns out that when the light bulb is turning off, the resistance appears more constant because the light bulb has reached some temperature, right? Because we're, we're pumping current through there and more and more current, exciting the atoms in that tungsten in the filament and increasing the temperature. And as we talked about with resistivity, the higher the temperature, the higher the resistance, okay? Because the resistivity has gone up. 
the paths of conductivity have gone down. They're, they're more difficult to get through when there's excitement in the atoms. It would seem that as we're turning off the light bulb, the light bulb has reached some temperature and we're taking away the current that caused that temperature change to begin with. So it might appear that as the light bulb is turning off, it's going to cool at a more linear rate. Okay? As opposed to when we're turning on the light bulb, we're forcing more and more current through the, through the filament, increasing the temperature at an unnatural rate. Unnatural as compared to the, to the Newton's law of cooling. So from that thought, this section is probably first because we have more curvature, more change in the resistance. And this section is probably, after it's bright, it's turning off. And you can test this by just holding the light bulb right up to the computer screen and clicking record and watching the trace with the light bulb on or off. And by the same token, we would put over here um, C and then D, okay? Because we have the change and then back this way. Now we can confirm all this when we look at the, um, the plot of, of resistance in time. Okay? And for this plot, you're just simply going to bring in the data using the data menu on the graph itself. Click on a graph, bring in the data for the light bulb. Click on the other graph, bring in the data for the light bulb. And my graphs might be switched from yours as far as uh, this way. Uh, but here we have the light bulb, and we, here we have a peak in resistance. Okay? And that's when the voltage has peaked. And right here, uh, we have the lowest resistance, and that's when the voltage is zero. Okay? And then it goes back up, and then it goes down. So we can see that the resistance of the light bulb is just changing at this low frequency. The resistor actually looks like this, just a horizontal line. This is maybe the 10 ohm resistor, okay? constant resistance as compared to that of the light bulb. When you analyze the light bulb, I kind of recommend studying this graph first and then go back to the light bulb to, to record where things are interesting. Where is it brightest? Where is the resistance changing the most? Um, where is it turned off? So you want to note all those things. And then you also want to say the, the direction um, as it's going from zero to bright, which one was first? The one curving or the one that's more straight or less curvature? So you want to annotate all those. When you annotate this graph of the resistance versus time, remember that resistance is just a calculation based upon voltage and divided by current. It's the ratio of voltage and current. Resistance is changing the most where? near what's called the inflection point. It's peaked right here, but if you look carefully at this plot, you'll see that the peak in resistance just follows the peak in voltage. Does that make sense? My voltage peaks, but my resistance trails a little bit in time. It kind of does make sense. Why do we have more resistance? Because the resistivity has gone up. Why has the resistivity gone up? Because the paths of conductivity have gone down. Why did those go down? Because the molecules inside there were excited, okay? And they're moving and moving and moving faster because the temperature's changing. It's getting hotter in there. Oh, well, all these things are based upon motion, on momentum, and this takes time to change the motion of these atoms. And so there's going to be a lag. There's going to be a peak in voltage. And just a little bit later, there's going to be a peak in resistance. I, I just think these plots are so fascinating um, when you study them and look at all the little nuances. You also will see this, this peak in, um, uh, not a peak, but a noise. Um, and some of these noise data points are, excuse me, and some of these noise data points are huge. And I'm calling them noise because look at where this blip occurs. This blip occurs when the voltage, this is the signal, okay, this is positive, this is zero, this is negative peak. 
when the voltage goes to zero, what happens to current? So in the numerator, we have voltage going to zero. What happens to current? It is also going to zero. So here we're dividing by a really small number, something that's approaching zero. And if we divide by a tiny, tiny number, decimally speaking, this ratio should blow up, right? And so this is not real data here. This is what I would call noise from our actual calculation of volts divided by current. We're dividing by something near zero. So we should not study this graph and say, ooh, there's some amazing um, physical property that I just discovered and I'm going to get a Nobel in physics. Uh, no, it's noise. It's from your calculation going to zero in the denominator. But you should note that because it's an anomaly on the plot. And then it's a good idea to throw on the 10 ohm resistor to compare the straight line to this curved line. And then finally, we have the... Um, the light bulb at different frequencies. Now we've talked about how the light bulb, when we have this uh, really low frequency, there's time for the temperature in the light bulb to change, for that filament to get excited and, and hotter, therefore resistivity changes, therefore resistance changes. Um, but then we cool it down or we allow it to cool and then we heat it up again as we're oscillating back and forth with the current very slowly. What would happen if we increase that frequency, if we start flipping that battery, so to speak, faster and faster and faster? So it's 0.25 hertz. What if we went to 4 hertz? In other words, the light bulb flashed more times every second. Hmm. And by the way, 4 hertz, that would be 8 flashes, right? So we've increased the frequency. What do you think might be happening with the temperature? Remember that process of exciting the atoms and then taking off the current and letting it cool? What do you think would happen if we change that frequency and make it faster and faster and faster? Do you think there's going to be time for the temperature to change? Or do you think that maybe the temperature of the light bulb will increase and reach some steady state value because there's no real time for it to go, to go through a complete cooling? Hmm. So I'd like you to investigate that. Um, increase the frequency of your signal generator and go 4 hertz and maybe 10 and 20, 30, uh, 40, maybe even, yeah, 60 hertz. Let's do 60 hertz because that's what your incandescent light has in your house. Your fluorescent lights have a ballast and it actually changes it, I believe, to 40 hertz. Um, but your incandescent light bulb, do you think the resistance is going like that? That would cause a lot of problems with your, um, the electricity in your house, I would have to guess. So find out what happens. Do we say that the light bulb's ohmic? Well, if we look at that curve um, that's, that's curved and then it comes back around, we have to say that for one given current, there's two voltages. And so that's not a function by definition. So we'd have to say, you know, Ohm's law, I can't really address with the light bulb at low frequency if I look at the whole cycle. If I just look at part of the cycle, say, going from off to brightest, just that portion, I can talk about Ohm's law and how the resistance is changing. But when I look at the entire cycle, I have to say that's not a function. Okay, but as the frequency increases, the light bulb might reach some steady state temperature. And in fact, we see from this plot that here's um, 0.25 hertz, this one that loops around, is 4 hertz and then 10 hertz is a little bit tighter and then we have 20 hertz which is even tighter and then 40 and 60 which begins to look like a straight line. In other words, throughout all cycles the light bulb appears ohmic because it's now a function. Okay, We're not limited to just looking at part of the cycle. The light bulb is just burning and it reaches some steady state temperature and now it has a constant resistance. By the way, for this data, we had to increase the sample rate to a thousand hertz in order to see better that line. So you could take the slope at 60 hertz and say, here's the resistance of the, of the light bulb. At 0.25 hertz, you can't take a slope. And in fact, Data Studio won't let you because there's two values up here and it becomes very messy. So yeah, the light bulb's kind of squirrely in that sense with Ohm's law. At high frequencies, 
the light bulb seems to have a steady resistance because the resistivity has reached some constant value where the temperature being changed by the current is now balanced by the natural cooling around the light bulb. Okay, we won't expect that that temperature goes up and up and up forever because then the light bulb would burst um, for the sake of too high of a temperature, catch on flames.